Hey guys, what's up? This is Courtney Barron, your TA for the semester. So today we're going to work on the chart project. So we'll start off by making a new document in Photoshop. Your document size will be 3000 by 3000. I'm just going to name it something like chart and my name for now. Um, I'm just going to check my settings because make sure everything hasn't been changed from a different file. Okay, let's go. Okay, to start we're going to put a dark background in. It can be black or another dark color. I'm going to use the bucket tool on a new layer. Okay, and then I have my pictures that I chose from the Google Share Drive and I'm just going to drop them in. You can also import them from another program like Bridge, but I just find it easier with my system to just kind of have them in a folder and drop them in. So I'm going to go through and rename all the um, layers, and this takes a while, but it's really worth it because it helps you keep track. Um, for this, I got a little specific because I didn't want to have to really look at the pictures to figure out what I was choosing. I'm going to put them all in a folder just to keep them together and keep them separate from the background. I'm also going to lock the fill layer so I don't have to worry about messing with it. So now I'm going to take all the photos and free transform them. You'll have to forgive me, I have um, a bit of an issue because I keep hitting shift because I'm so used to using Illustrator. But if you hit shift in Photoshop, it will distort them, but if you do nothing, it will not. I don't know if this is a preset online, but um, play with yours because yours might use shift to keep them in a, the ratio they're in. So now I'm just kind of laying them out so I can see them a little better. I have an idea of what my layout's going to be, but I'm not 100% sure yet. So now I'm toggling all the layers off except the ones that I'm going to start with for the using the frame tool. So I'm going to grab the frame tool. It's already preset to be an ellipse or a circle. And I'm going to start at the topmost corner and drag down. And you can readjust the picture underneath like you saw in the Linda tutorial. So I'm just kind of centering it for now. So now you can see that we have some smaller circles because the pictures themselves were smaller. You could have also fixed this early on and made sure that all your picture images were the same width, but I realized a little too late, so I just decided 
to use guides to help me figure out the size of the circle and make everything the same size. So to use the guides, you can pull up um, the view tab and then just go to rulers. And that brings up your rulers. So originally they're in inches, like shown on the Wanda tutorial, but you can right click them to turn them into pixels. And you can also get guides by grabbing onto the ruler and dragging over from the top or bottom and you'll get a straight line. So for the free transform tool, you can also hit command T, which I will be doing later on in this video. My program's running a little slow because of the screen recording, so I apologize. So now I'm gonna clear those guides because I don't need them anymore. So now I'm gonna turn all the visibility on and then turn it all off using the folder tab so I don't have some that are on and some that are off. I can just toggle the tab with the folder. And here you can see me changing the ruler to pixels from inches. So now I'm going to go to the view tab and I'm going to go to new guide and I'm going to um, type in percentages to make it fourth. So I'm going to go 25, 50. Now the first time I did it, I actually think I mistyped and so they were not even. So you'll see me redo the grid line. Now I'm using the align tools to kind of get them situated. I decided to just work with the verticals for now, just kind of playing around. But the align tools are very helpful because it's very hard to eyeball straight lines. And so that and the grids are super helpful in organizing things. Here I am checking with the guidelines and making sure that everything is aligned correctly. So now I am clearing those guidelines and now I'm going to go in and adjust the pictures in the frames to be a little bit bigger on some and a little more centered. So now I'm just going through with the guides and making sure everything's perfect because I noticed a little bit of um, error when I was readjusting things. So I'm just making sure everything's solid. So now I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I would recommend saving throughout the process, this didn't take me too long, so I didn't worry about saving. But if you're working on something for multiple hours, it's good practice to just save a couple of times so you don't rely on Adobe's autosave feature, which will work, but sometimes it won't. So it's good to always save to have a version to work on if your computer does crash. I'm also gonna save this file as a JPEG file. I'm gonna put my last name 
first, and this will be the file that you turn in on Moodle. This file is flat and you can't edit it, the layers are gone, but you still have that Photoshop file that you saved earlier, so if you notice any mistakes on the JPEG or you want to go back and play around with it, you still can. So there's my final JPEG and that will conclude our tutorial. If you need anything else, feel free to contact me. I will be holding office hours and have a great day or night or whenever you're watching this.